In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Christ is risen. Alleluia. And he has overcome death. It's Easter Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace C. A a selection of Don Bosco. Stay tuned. It is Thursday, the 25th of April, 2024, fourth week of Easter, and today we celebrate the feast of Mark the Evangelist. Mark. Also known as John Mark was ultimately associated with the spreading of the faith and the development of the early church. Born in Jerusalem, he accompanied Barnabas, Paul, and Peter in their apostolic journeys. According to an ancient tradition, Mark's gospel reflects the preaching of Peter, considered founder of the church in Alexandria of Egypt. Mark is especially honored by the Coptic Christians of that country. His contribution to the establishment of the church in Africa cannot be underestimated. And today we give thanks to God for the gift of faith we have received through St. Mark. He is the first one to have written the gospel and the other two, Matthew and Luke, drew from him. John is an independent gospel. We want to pray today for all those who are called Marks, that they can be evangelizers, evangelists like Mark was. Participating in the proclamation of the word of God for today are the following daily bread members. Ndabile Sibanden Suluka celebrating our birthday today from Lusaka, Zambia. Text for us the first reading. Josephine Wambui Mudingani from Nairobi, Kenya, who celebrated her birthday yesterday. Text for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Wagonza Deo, who celebrated his priestly anniversary yesterday from Kotido Diocese in Uganda. Let us pray. O oh God, who raised up St. Mark, your evangelist, and endowed him with the grace to preach the gospel, grant, we pray, that we may so profit from his teaching as to follow faithfully in the footsteps of Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading, my son, Mark sends you greetings. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 5b to 14. Beloved, clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility towards one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God that in due time he may exalt you. Cast all your anxieties on him, for he cares about you. Be sober, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a rolling lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, be firm in your faith, knowing that the same experience of suffering is required of your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, establish, and strengthen you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. By Sylvanus, a faithful brother, as I regard him, I have written briefly to you, 
exhorting and declaring that this is a true grace of God. Stand fast in it. She who is at Babylon, who is likewise chosen, sends greetings to you. And so does my son Mark. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace to all of you that are in Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The sponsor of Psalms is taken from the book of Psalms 89, verses 2 to 3, 6 to 8, 16 to 17. Response is taken from Psalms 89, verses 2a. And the response is, I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. Through all ages, my mouth will proclaim your fidelity. I have declared your mercy is established forever. Your fidelity stands firm as the heavens. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. The heavens praise your wonders, O Lord. Your fidelity in the assembly of your holy ones. For who in the sky can compare with the Lord? Or who is like the Lord among the heaven's powers? I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. How blessed the people who know your praise, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your face, who fight their joy every day in your name who make your justice their joyful acclaim. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. Gospel acclamation is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Verses 23a to 24b. Alleluia. 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 We preach Christ, crucified, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Mark chapter 16, verses 15 to 20. At that time, appearing to the eleven, Jesus said to them, Go into the world and preach the gospel to the whole creation. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, do not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by the signs that attended to it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
Happy Feast of St. Mark! I love this young man called Mark because he teaches me a lot of things. The first time we hear John Mark be mentioned in the Acts of the Apostles is Acts chapter 12 verse 12. So if at all you want to remember this passage, just say Acts 12.12. 12. Acts 1.2.1.2. 2, 1, 2. This is where we find John Mark being mentioned. And his house was being used as a place for believers to gather and pray. Now later Mark is mentioned as a companion of Barnabas and Paul during their travels together in Acts chapter 12 verse 25, the passage that we had yesterday. John Mark was also Barnabas' cousin if we go to Colossians chapter 4 verse 10. He was a helper of Paul and Barnabas on their first missionary journey in Acts chapter 13 verse 5. However, he did not stay through the whole trip. John Mark deserted Paul and Barnabas in Pamphylia and he left the work in Acts chapter 15 verse 38. Now the Bible does not say why Mark deserted, but his departure came right after mostly fruitless time in Cyprus. Go to Acts chapter 13, verse 4 to 12. Only one conversion is recorded in Cyprus, which was very disappointing. But there had been strong demonic opposition. It is likely that the young John Mark was discouraged at the hardness of the way and decided to return to the comforts of home. Now, many scholars have said after that departure, John Mark went to join Peter. And it is Peter who actually mentored him and he got a lot from him. So much so that in writing that gospel that he wrote, he had a lot of Peter in him. That's why we have taken our first reading from St. Peter we said to have influenced Mark, who wrote the gospel somewhere between 55 AD and 59 AD. Some say 63 AD. Let us keep it around there. And we are the beneficiaries of this gospel. The gospel that is written to show that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We have something of encouragement from the first reading of today. And this reading is taken because it mentions Mark. It mentions Mark saying, my son Mark sends you greetings. That at the time Peter was writing this letter, Mark was with him. And you can see what sort of words were penned down by Peter that we can take as words of Mark himself. Because they were together. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility towards one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. If you want anything to work in your life, learn humility. Humility is grace. Humility only happens to people who are patient. To people who don't want to be in a hurry to show what God is doing in their lives. Who are not in a hurry to display what would just make themselves happy. A proud person is a very selfish person. Because pride just offends others. And if you know you came from dust, you are going to be more humble than that. If you know that one day you will lie down in a coffin somewhere where others will be just body viewing you, you are going to be humbler than that. And we want to remind ourselves of that fact so that we become more and more receptive and accommodating. People who are not humble will never accommodate others in their lives. So he says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that in due time he may exhort you. 
That's the reason why we have to humble ourselves. Because anything, any glory that comes by our own effort is short-lived. But the glory that is given to us by God is everlasting. It remains. It will remain even after you are gone. So humble yourself, my brother, that God may raise you up. Meaning go down to the ground. Meaning understand that you are dust so that God may raise you up and make you get a place of honor in his place. Cast all your anxieties before him for he cares about you. He knows what you are going through. He knows everything that is affecting your life. And he just wants you to pour out everything on him. Oh, I feel like I'm giving the good night message. And I will give something of this sort in tonight's good night message. The gospel passage of today tells us about the command in the last segment of the gospel of St. Mark. The command of Jesus to preach to all nations, to all creation. We are commanded not to leave out anybody in the proclamation of the word. Jesus says this after the resurrection. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to the all creation. Don't leave out anything. Preach the gospel even to animals by taking care of them. Preach the gospel even to trees by taking care of them. Preach the gospel even to stubborn human beings, even atheists, by making sure your smile wins them back to God. You know, those non-believers cannot be transformed by the preaching of the word or even by telling them about the Bible. They won't believe your Bible, but they are going to be transformed by your lifestyle. They are going to be transformed by the way you relate to them. That's more of preaching than even what I am doing. Oh yes, you can even transform a satanist by your kindness to that person. Don't be aggressive. Be aggressive to sin. Be aggressive to evil doing. But don't be aggressive to evil doers. Be kind to them. And one day they are going to tell the story of their transformation because you preach to them in the spirit of St. Mark. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Thursday to you, and happy Feast of St. Mark. Thanks be to God.